In this video, you'll learn how to create a fully managed rack system in 5 min steps using AWS Bedrock. The first step is to create an IAM user instead of using your root user. This is considered best practice and also protects your accounts for security purpose. And to achieve that, let's type IAM in the search bar. Select IAM and now we select users and next create user. And let's give that user a name. Let's say bedrock, bedrock user. And we want to provide that user access to the management console. So we select provide access and I want to create an IAM user. Next, give a custom password that you will remember. This will be used when logging in your account with the IAM user. And also, um, I don't want the user to create a new password because I want to make things easier and simple. But in real world, you might allow user to create new passwords for the first time. And I uncheck that section in next. And next, we attach policy directly when creating the account. And we give that user the administrator access. So that IAM user will have access to the account as an admin. We give administrator access in next. And finally, we create the user. After creating the user, we have the following credentials. We have this link to log in with the new IAM user. This is the username of the IAM user. And here is the password that will be used by the user to access the console. Let's copy this one and open a new incognito browser and paste. And from here, we can see that uh, the 12 digits is uh, provided to connect to the account. This is the ID of my account, original account. I am user, this is my bedrock user. And the password is the password that I have provided during the account creation. I can remember this one. And here we can see that the user has access to the management console. And we might want to make this dark to get the dark mode. Yes, that's all. We have access to the management console with the IAM user. The second step is to create an S3 bucket to host our data. And before that, let's have a look at the data that will be used. This is the well-known research paper, um, Attention is All You Need. And this is 15 pages documents that we will save in the bucket. Now let's create the S3 bucket. From the management console type S3, And once we have that, create buckets. And from create buckets, we leave the general purpose. And let's call this buckets bedrock experiment bucket. This bucket name has to be unique because buckets are globally available, which means that if you create a bucket name that exists or has been created by someone else, it would not allow you to create that bucket name. So we leave everything else by default and now we can create bucket all right our bucket has been created now it's currently empty and we upload data and i have that data available here just drop here and here is the pdf that will be uploaded in that bucket and now upload we can see that our buckets has been populated with the new PDF file. Here is the new PDF file that has been uploaded in, in our bucket. This is the name of the bucket here. Next step is to create a vector store for our dataset that is currently on S3. But before that, make sure to be on US East 1 because this is where most AWS services are, are available. And now let's type bedrock from the search bar. Here we have Amazon bedrock and select this. We can see knowledge base under build on builder tool we select knowledge base so from this section we're going to create a new knowledge base so create knowledge base and from that knowledge base let's say research paper research paper knowledge base you can give a description this is optional and uh, i am permission create and use a new service role we leave this one by default and service role name 
leave it that one as default as well and for the data source we have a couple of options here we have an s3 bucket this is the most adapted for our scenario because our data is currently stored on the S3 buckets. But we could also have the option to crawl data from a web page where we'll be able to interact with a web page content or have data from Confluence or Salesforce or even SharePoint. These are a couple of options that we can explore or further if you have time to explore these it will be a good learning experience. So we choose Amazon S3. And now what we have is we select next. And there is a question where we want our data to be extracted from. This data is currently stored in the same account, the same IM user account. So we select this account. And now we browse the S3 path. And from S3 path, we can see all the S3 buckets that have been created in this account. And for our case, there is only one S3 bucket. So we select this S3 bucket name and choose. And now we leave the defaults. Uh, we have chunk different chunking options. And we know that depending on the type of chunking being used, that can also impact the performance of our retrieval augmented generation model when giving an answer to the final user. We can also have like different options here in the custom section. Use, we have chunking strategies, defaults. This is what we are going to use. But we can also have different like fixed size chunking, hierarchical chunking, semantic chunking. But this for simplicity's sake, let's say that we want to use the default option. And now next. And once we have a data, then that data needs to be embedded using an embedding model. And we have also different options here. And we are going to use, let's say, Titan text embedding version number two. Let's select this, this version by Amazon and vector database. For vector database as well, we have different options for vector databases. And in this case, we are going to use AWS open search serverless vector database. And we can also choose different databases, um, vector database here, like Aurora vector database, Mongo, Pinecon, and so on and so forth. Um, this open search option is, I will say, recommended when you are going into deployment, uh, into production, because we might want everything to be hosted on AWS, like the model, the data, all managed by AWS. But if you want to use other databases as well, like Pinecon, you might also use those databases as well. But for our scenario, let's just click and use these options and next. Once we have this, we have a kind of review of everything that needs to be created for this knowledge base. The name of the knowledge base, the service role, data type source S3. And once we are happy with everything, now we can create the knowledge base. This knowledge base creation can take a couple of minutes uh, because it needs to set up some different things on open search, uh, open search site. So let's get back in a few minutes after this is done. After several minutes, we can see that the knowledge base has been created. Now we can go to data source where we can find the knowledge base here. Let's first sync. After creating the knowledge base, we have that knowledge base available, but we have to synchronize the knowledge base with the data sets to be able to create the proper index indexes and also the vectors using the embedding model that we have chosen. Now we choose the name of a data source and next sync. This synchronization is going to take a few seconds. And once that is properly performed, we should see um, additional information. Let's select the name of the knowledge base. And here we have the knowledge base that is ready. And yeah, that's it. Here we have successfully synced the data and had the look at the content of what has been created within OpenSearch.
The knowledge base is ready. The next and final step is now to interact with that data. And to do that, let's select test. And here we can choose different categories of models. We have both Amazon and Anthropic. So let's say that we want to choose Anthropic model cloud, cloud two, second version of a model and select apply. With that, we have that model cloud two version available here. Now we can start asking questions to the model. Let's see what is this document about? We ask that question to the model and run. Now we can see that the model is retrieving and generating response from the documents. Here, the response is the document is about the transformer, a novel neural network architecture for sequence modeling and transduction tax, such as machine translation and so on and so forth. An interesting thing here is that we also have sources cited by the model. So here we can see our show details. Here we have the sources provided by the model source chunk one. We have here that source chunk one metadata associated with that. We have all this metadata that we can use as a reference to double check if the model response is correct or not. And chunk number two, which is the second source. And here we have a final chunk. We see the last chunk. Oh uh, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, let's say that we want to ask another question. Let's ask another question. Who are the authors of this document? We'll see how good the model does. So every time we ask a question, the model retrieves and generates the, the answer. Here we have the authors of the Transformer papers. Are uh, Here we have the author's name, Jacob, Ashish, Noan. And here we have the details similarly to the one we had um, before. Here we chunk is source chunk one and metadata associated with that is here. And this is basically here where we could find the name of the authors. Let's hide source again. Yeah, we have explored in few minutes how we can create a chat system using fully managed AWS bedrock. And also don't forget one important step is to remove, like delete your knowledge base Otherwise, you'll be charged um, per, per use. I think it's an hourly charging. So select your knowledge base and delete the knowledge base. Let's remove, close this one first and type delete. This is going to delete your knowledge base and make sure that you're not charged for things that you're not using. Finally, the knowledge base has been deleted. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And also in future videos, I'll be covering next uh, way, different ways of interacting with AWS bedrock models so that you can use it outside of AWS. All right. Thank you. And see you next time. Bye-bye.